CNN with the arguments, right? Well, if God was a God of love, why this? Why that? Well, because you're some stuck-up baby, that's why. You know, when people are suffering, you know often where they're going to find themselves in this book? There's two books they're going to find themselves in very often. Psalms and Job. Psalms and Job. I don't know what it's all about, but those are the comfort books. They'll go to Job because they want to see why do the righteous suffer. And at the end of Job, they real, Job realizes God had a purpose and a plan the whole time. That Job was literally fighting for the right the whole time. And he stood. He had to get checked a little bit, but hey, man, if that was me, I wouldn't have made it through half that book. It would have been like, Randy just, you know, he's gone, man. There's nothing to talk about here. In Psalms, it's because stuff like this. David's asking the real questions. And he's praying the real prayers of somebody hurting who needs comfort. Can anybody attest to that? Amen. Amen. You know, and, and the thing is, if we're not going to familiarize ourselves with the Bible, where are you going to run when you need the comfort? Where are you going to go? You won't even know where to go. There was some old Jethro Tull song. And, and it's like Jethro Tull, Randy Gorsky. Like, why are you even bringing that up? But, you know, it was a really funny thing because he's talking about this, the world going into chaos. And then he says that the individual has the Bible open to page one. Think about that. Would that be you on that day? Or would you know right where to go? You see the point? See how ridiculous that is? That Guess what? Now that everything's haywire, I'm going to open up to Genesis 1-1. Where's my help? You know, you know uh, Daniel, he didn't start praying the day that he was thrown into the lion's den, did he? What if he would have? How do you think it would have done in that lion's den? Lunch. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he would have been lunch. <laughs> you see? He wouldn't have made it. And the fact is, your consistency today is going to prove and provide your success in the storm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, he probably knows about it. You know, uh, you mind if I pick on you a little bit? Go ahead. I mean, this brother, he's going through things. I, I don't even know what he's going through, and he's happy. That's a testimony to me. It really is. You know, because I, I get a little paper cut, and I'm like, oh, why? How long, oh, Lord? You know, and, 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 and it's like I look at a brother like this, and, you know, he takes the time to ask, what's the Lord doing for you today, brother? And it's like, wow, I haven't stopped to smell the roses in a little while. You know, and that's a gift, bro. Uh, that's all I'm saying, but that's a gift. But probably because he's received some comfort from somebody, the Lord. But, you know, um, John, about comfort, go to 1 John 5.13. Where am I going to put this? How about here? 1 John... 5.13. You, you know what, what's going to give you some comfort? The telescopic method of the Bible. John sums up his book of 1 John in one statement. These things have I written unto you that believe on, excuse me, the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. He sums up the whole thing using the telescopic method, and he's like, look, if you haven't heard anything I said until now, guess what? The whole reason I'm even writing this is to comfort you. Because guess what? You're not going to be here in this world for all eternity. There's coming a day where you're either going to close your eyes in death, or you're going to fly through those clouds in rapture. Amen? 
And that's a fact. And you need to understand that, that if you have salvation, it's not going anywhere. Do you understand why these other churches that teach you can lose it are now in such crossways with God? Let's read it again. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. Have you done that? Yeah. Amen. I've done that. That ye may know that ye have eternal life. John was under the idea that somebody could know. You know what the Catholic Church calls that? The sin of presumption. You think you're going to heaven, so that's a sin. Uh, no, that's scriptural. Well, at least it was for John in the Bible. When I read the Bible, it comforts me. And God showed me this verse when I needed comfort. Because guess what? No matter how bad this world and this life and your tragedies become, and they might get worse. You're going to heaven one day. You only have promotion from here. I mean, literally, I mean, we, we read Fox's Book of Martyrs, and as they're sawing people in half, they're singing hymns. How do they do that? They knew something. You know, or, or it's like the Ray Comfort crowd. They want to open up the Bible and say, Oh, you know what? We're sinners. Okay, all right, I'm a sinner. You know, Jesus Christ died on the cross. You know, okay, yeah, he sure did. And then he says, go think about that. And they're like, huh? Just go think about that. Go to Romans 10, 13. We're just picking on people now, but Romans 10, 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be what? Saved. Saved. How about this, Mr. Ray Comfort? Park the car on Romans 10, read them 9 through 10, and then jump to 13. And then tell them, hey, it seems like you're under conviction about something. Ask them what it is. Well, I don't want to go to hell. You want to do something about that? Get saved. Get saved right now. Well, how? Read this verse. Whosoever should call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do it now. Guess what? I'm not even going to pray with you. You're going to pray. You're going to ask. Amen? Don't send them away. Don't catch that hook and clip the line. Reel them in for Jesus, my man. That guy could really have a ministry if he would finish what God started. Amen? And God uses men, does he not? Yes. Now, that, that's not an anti-scriptural statement. God uses men. We're his hands, we're his feet, right? We're his mouthpiece. I think about uh, Moses in Exodus. Didn't God kind of use him a little bit? Well, it started with a burning bush, but yeah, that burning bush appointed a man, did he not? Amen. God uses people. Well, Randy, you don't understand salvation. Well, it just saved me. When? Romans 10, 13. When I called on him to save me. Well, Randy, that's a work. And now you're saying that salvation is by works. I, I never knew that opening my mouth and crying out to God was a work. You know, it's interesting, you know, what people call work these days. We, we live in a very weird world now. You know, uh, Proverbs talks about, you know, a man that it, it, it's, uh, it's grievous for him to take his hand and put it to his mouth just to eat food. That's the type of place we're living in now. That just opening your mouth and calling upon Jesus is a work now? I'm sorry, bro, you're lazy. I don't, I don't know what else to call you. I mean, you can't even talk now without that being a work? I'm not going to ask you how many hours a week you're going to work, okay? Because I'm afraid of what the answer is, you know. It's, it's probably grievous to put it to your mouth, right? You know, dinner time. All right, and let's finish here. So there's safety, there's comfort, and number three, if you're still with me, there's treasures. There's treasures in the big picture. 
So we can, we can now look at, oh, look at our Proverbs 2. Proverbs 2, and we're almost done, I promise. Proverbs 2, 1 through 5. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou inclinest thine ear unto wisdom, and apply thine heart to understanding, yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid 